I'm Jen McMurdo, and I'm super excited to introduce our guest today, Karen Miller. And I just want to invite those who are calling in. You will have an opportunity to ask some questions around 115, 120, and you just need to use the number 347. 347- 9890384 and make sure you press that number 1 to speak. And then after the interview, stay tuned for our community corner where we'll let you know what's up and coming. So a little bit about Karen Miller. Karen Miller was born in Jackson, Michigan in 1967, and for over 10 years in early adulthood, Karen suffered from debilitating anxiety and depression. In her search for a sense of overall well-being, she sought help and healing from many different teachings and traditions, spirituality, philosophy, psychology, meditation, and yoga. Ultimately, she saw a common thread among all traditions. People should love and treat each other as they would themselves because all people and living beings are connected as one body of life. She learned that fear, such as her anxiety, blocks one's awareness of the love that connects us all. Having transformed her own life, Karen went on to graduate from the University of Michigan Law School and currently resides in Southern California, where she serves as Vice President and General Counsel of a Digital Media Consortium. So we just want to welcome Karen. Thank you Hi, so Karen. much. It's a pleasure to be here. Hello. Well, we're, we're, it's just an honor to have you today, and I am super excited um, to talk about your organization and your book and and the things that we kind of touched on before. So I just I wanted to start out by ask, to, talking about actually your organization is called Our New Evolution. And what what does that mean, and and how are we evolving? So I picked the name Our New Evolution, which the acronym is ONE, to uh, promote initiatives that reflect values of unity consciousness. Uh, So I see our society as evolving from a state of separation and isolationism to a state of uh, cooperation and collaboration, uh, and one of the vehicles to help us uh, through this transition is is unity consciousness. Like I said, um, and uh, I think that as we consciously choose, we as humans have the ability to um, consciously choose our actions based on our values. And as we consciously choose to align with unity consciousness, um, we have the opportunity to direct the way that society evolves. Uh, Our values are reflected in our actions, and our actions create our social structures, and our social structures um, manifest the world that we see today. Uh, So I think it's a great opportunity for us to uh, evolve as as a society, as humanity, as individuals also uh, from a state of being in which we're separate and isolated and see the differences among us to a state of uh, more holistic approach where we see the connections and how everything that we do impacts everything else. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you mentioned, you, talked, you mentioned a little bit about values, um, and I know that's something we were touching on before we, we started this show. So a lot of people think of values as being very personal um, and perhaps even based on religious or political values that they personally hold. So how is this similar to or different than the global values you outline um, in your new book? Sure. Just, I, I just want to point out that it's a little difficult to hear you all of a sudden, so uh, just if you can check your audio, that would be great. Um, but I did hear your question and happy to speak to that. Uh, So I do think that lots of people think that values are very personal, but, uh, and, you know, there's a concept called uh, uh, moral relativism or ethical relativism uh, in that uh, the position that uh, 
moral or ethical propositions um, don't reflect objective or universal moral truths, um, but rather um, uh, are based on individual circumstances and that uh, that uh, all morals uh, are equally valid. But I take the position in, in the, my book, Global Values, A New Paradigm for a New World, I, I talk about... Uh, identify 10 values that uh, describe unity consciousness. And I take the position that there are objective uh, morals that are beneficial to humanity, uh, and there are other things that are not as beneficial. Uh, uh, this moral objectivism goes back all the way to ancient Greek and the Stoics, and other current writers like Sam Harris and the Moral Landscape have talked about a, an objective approach to values. Um, if you think about it, you can, you know, hitting someone in the face with a rock uh, isn't very beneficial <laughs> to uh, the well-being of the other person or even the collective between the two people. So I think that there are objective uh, objective morals that can be upheld uh, that it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, something that any individual chooses, and that if we set up a framework of values that promote life and the benefit of all living things, uh, that's what I am attempting to do in the book Global Values. Well, and I would love for you to share what what those values that you have found those common values. Um, I would love for you to share those. Sure, yeah. So there's, there's, of course, so many wonderful values that I, I could have chosen, but I really just picked these ten to tell the story um, that we're all connected and that we're all one body of life. Um, and uh, it it, it kind of goes back to the idea that uh, we can use values rather to, than to uh, to unite us for social good rather than to polarize us and divide us ourselves against each other. Uh, so the ten values that I talk about are unity, community, life, freedom, connection, sustainability, creativity, empowerment, choice, and integrity. And those ten values, uh, like I said, tell the story of unity consciousness. Um, it, it, you know, back when ten years ago, when I wrote these ten values down, I was working with uh, Marianne Williamson and uh, in the formation of the Peace Alliance, and I was also working with Deepak Chopra and uh, as an advisor to the Alliance for a New Humanity, and and other social change groups, and I saw that. Uh, I saw it as one movement of social transformation, uh, whether it be the green movement and environmental sustainability to the arts, to government and um, politics, uh, and uh, even uh, spirituality. And so uh, these ten values pull in many sectors of society uh, with creativity pulling in the arts, freedom pulling in government and democracy, uh, life uh, pulling in a spirituality, uh, and I use those to create a framework uh, uh, of values that, if, if adopted, um, promote a healthy and sustainable world. Mm. You know, as you are, as you are implementing this, I was just thinking um, there's a lot of people out there that feel um, like they they don't have a voice. They don't feel like um, they can make a difference or of and change what's going on in the world right now. Um, that they feel more that they're they're being controlled more than they are in control. Um, and so, you know, with all of the global challenges that we're facing right now, how can one person feel like? they can make a difference and that they, you know, in a sense have um, some, some say in, within their own world and, and in society. Definitely. I think, I think that that is uh, one of the core issues that I'm 
uh, attempting to address with these values is that we do have the power to transform our environment uh, merely by uh, starting by transforming ourselves, by going within and identifying what we individually value uh, and uh, aligning our actions with those values. Uh, I, in the end of the book, uh, the call to action is meditation, uh, to use mindfulness and contemplation and, and going within to uh, let those, the pain and separation and uh, various experiences of our lives that have settled within our bodies to just kind of bubble up. Uh, and as we uh, go within and, and identify with these values and unity consciousness and connection to the whole body of life, uh, those ideas of, of uh lack of empowerment and separation from the rest of the world as if we're watching uh, all these uh, terrorism and uh, war and, and religious conflict around the world and feel as if we have nothing that we can do over it. We become more empowered to change ourselves and to change our communities. And as I said, uh, as we change ourselves and our communities, we ch change our social structures as well. Yeah, absolutely. What I hear you saying is the really the change really happens from the inside and then moves out because that, because we're right. all connected. And 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 that's the thing. One thing that we have control over as individuals is ourselves. We have control over the choices that we make. Um, you know, one of the uh, ten values that I identify is 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 choice itself that we have the choice to uh, align our actions with our values and decide what those uh, what values we wish to uphold you know with the uh you know current terrorism uh, uh events in, in Brussels and all around the world actually uh i see that as individuals that, um those we we identify as terrorists as individuals who somehow have lost their connection to the rest of the human family. Uh, they, they see people as expendable. Uh, I, I, uh, I can only suspect that they feel um, that they're outside of uh, the mainstream and that they've lost hope uh, that they must do something drastic as, 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 uh, as a terrorist attack in order to implement uh, social transformation. And I, I think that it, we as individuals can take... Um, responsibility for that by uh, working to create an environment where uh, all people feel empowered and hopeful and heard. Um, I mean, it's quite simply, people who are happy don't blow themselves up. Um, and I think that uh, I think terrorism itself is a symptom of this illusion of separation where uh, individuals feel hopeless and separated from the rest of of humanity and the rest of the body of life, and they're looking for um, something better uh, after they after they die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, I was talking with someone the other day, and where the outside, they were sharing and saying, you know, our out, what we're seeing on the outside is really a mirror of what's going on on the inside. And as you're speaking that, that's that's really what I'm connecting and hearing that's coming from you. And I, I love the perspective that you're giving on, you know, people that we put in the places, um, you know, as, as villains and these terrorists and, and putting them and seeing them as people and really looking at, well, what's going on with them. And, you know, you, you've been really open about the fact, actually, that you suffered from anxiety and depression, you know, early on in your adulthood so, you know, how how does your latest work on these global values reach out to others in the world community that are dealing with with your with similar struggles, but also with you know with other struggles? Yes, I I think that one of the uh, biggest reasons for the uh, feeling of separation and isolation. Uh, from the rest of humanity and, and from the rest of the world is is all based in fear. Um, and, and that's what I really learned from my own anxiety is that uh, 
living in a fearful state caused me to uh, create a fearful environment. I, uh, when, when you are fearful, you try to protect yourself from other people, and that causes more isolation and more disconnection from other people. So like begets like. Uh, if living in a fearful state, we create more fear within the world, and terrorism comes from that. Um, but if we shift internally to a state of love, shifting from fear to love and compassion for other people, that heals us, and um, we begin to be able to step into the shoes of another person, and we begin to see our similar similarities rather than our differences. Uh, so I really think that uh, through these values, uh, I'm not only telling the story of unity consciousness, but helping uh, helping you to shift from a fearful mindset to one based in love and compassion. Absolutely. I just um, I just want to take a moment to invite those who want to call in right now and um, ask questions of Karen. This would be the time to call. Just remember that number is 347-989-0384 and then press 1 to speak. Um, as those are calling in, Karen, you know, we, I, as part of this radio show, people that are coming on really feel... Um, have a message to share and have really had just things put on their heart that they just feel so strongly that they just, you know, they want to share and they want to get out there. And, you know, as you're you're sharing about your book and your organization, you know, I just want to ask you, you know, what's really on your heart? People that are listening today, what is it that you just really want them to hear coming from you today? I think primarily that there's a message of hope that we do have the power within us to transform our lives and that we have the power to trans through transforming our lives we touch other people and can transform the world. It all goes back to that initial question that you asked, how can I as one individual have an impact when there are these terrorist bombings going around the world and, you know, I, I'm fearful just watching the news. Uh, I think mm-hmm. that the, the the biggest message of hope is, is a message of hope. You know, um, I put this on Facebook. I just published the book uh, late last year and put it on Facebook. Um, uh, it's called Global Values Movement on Facebook. And now in, in less than a year, there's over um, 280,000 uh, people who are fans around the world of of global mm-hmm. values. And the interesting thing is that it's not uh, the spiritual community in the United States or the New Age movement or uh, or anything like that. It's, it's primarily young men in the Middle East who are following this. Uh, there's uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Egypt, uh, and, and also Bangladesh, uh, over 100,000 people in Bangladesh. So clearly the message of global values is resonating with people from all different culturals, and religious affiliations, and I see this as a powerful way to cut across uh, cultural, religious, and political boundaries to unite us as one. Yeah, yes, absolutely, and, I, you know, I heard you speak a lot about um, the power of love, um, you know, and and I I feel inclined to ask you, you know, with your experience of depression and anxiety, what is it that really brought you out of that? Well, I, I my personal path was A Course in Miracles, uh, and, and that book is really focused on a shift from fear to love. Uh, so I just uh, started practicing the exercises and started meditating and going within, and I started... Uh, of all things, I started running also. And as I started running more and feeling more positive, I started smiling more. And as I started smiling more, I noticed that people smiled back. And all of a sudden, my world was just somewhat transforming, and I realized that I had the power to transform that myself. Um, And I just wanted to share that with other people um, since I transformed my own life that way. Yes, absolutely. I love... I love what you're sharing because, 
you know, as we do, as we are talking about, I mean, war is something that's affecting everyone. Famine is something that's affecting everyone. All of these things. And I, I love that you're saying that really what we have is, is the control inside of ourselves. And that's what you found, you know, on your journey of coming out of that. And applying that to the message that you're sharing, you know, that we have the power within us. It's changing the things within us is is that consciousness that we're needing to come into is what I'm really hearing you say. Is that, is, is yeah, that correct? That's, that's, that's exactly right. And even in the book, I talk about the the story of the Wizard of Oz. And, you know, like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, we can – you know, be looking for something that's over the rainbow. We can be looking for something out there, and then we get caught up in, like, this cyclone of chaos with flying monkeys and all these things that we created in our dreams. But really, Mm -hmm. you know, in the end, she goes to the wizard, and she realizes that all she had to do was click her heels and go home. She had the answers all along. And all the Mm -hmm. characters in the story were aspects, you know, of herself, of her mental state, her courage, her... um, ego and wisdom and, and fears. And uh, so I, I use that Wizard of Oz and, and story of Dorothy to really show that, you know, we have the power within us. Uh, we don't need to uh, go and, and find the, the Good Witch of the West to help us do that. Uh, but we really work through that within our own selves. Um, and, and, and we each create our own personal story of coming home to that recognition that we're all one body of life, that we're all one, that we're all connected, and that we've, uh, we always have been, that this, this illusion of separation and isolation is just a dream that we made up. Mm. That ultimately we are all very connected. Yeah, and I think uh, as, 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 we, as, as you start to live that way and start to take on that perspective, uh, You'll see it in very simple things, like I said, you know, smiling at someone and they smile back. Uh, you may think that just, you know, recycling or composting, like what impact is that going to have on the whole global, global um, environmental challenges that we face? But when you join with other people and see the broader movement that's going on, you see that all these small things that we as individuals do have an enormous impact on the global community. Well, yes, absolutely. Um, And I was, you know, as I'm sitting here listening to you, I think there are so many people who are resonating with this and really starting to understand um, this. But there are some that are not quite sure, you know, where to start with this. And so if as, as people are listening to you today and if someone wanted to take a small step, like right here today, what could they do to get started on the road to connecting with with those global values um, that that you were sharing? Yeah, I think that it would you know go to my website ournewevolution.org, uh, and you'll find the global values listed out there. And there's also a link to how to get the book um, on Amazon.com. But I think uh, you know what I what I propose in in the book is to uh, do a very simple meditations. Uh, you don't need to use a Sanskrit mantra or something that you don't understand or anything complicated to mem- to meditate. It's just a matter of becoming still and becoming aware of your thoughts. And sometimes it helps to have a mantra like uh, what is used as the Sanskrit mantras, but I suggest just using one of the values. So, for example, uh, you could sit quietly and think, Unity, together we make up one body of life. Our diversity is a celebration of all that is. Together we are whole. And then sit with that and uh, pay attention to your breath, pay attention to what's going on in your body. And as your mind starts wandering off, go back to the word unity and focus on that and focus on your breath. And I, um, and, and I suggest that you know, we do very simple meditations like that on, on values um, to help us align those at the core of our being so that when we go out in the world, uh, we uh, align our actions with, with values that support uh, all of humanity. 
Well, yes, absolutely. I, I'm as I'm sitting here listening. I, you know, we have a lot of listeners, and I, I want to end. You know, as we're wrapping this up, we have a lot of listeners, Karen, that are very in tune with energy, um, what that is, you know, and how that flows through our body and and throughout the universe. And I just wanted to, if I could, just ask you to elaborate a little bit on your understanding of, you know, when we meditate and we focus on these values, um, what do you see really happening? What is that really creating, I would say creating, um, on the inside of us? What's the process that our our body is going through? And, I mean, because some people would say, okay, the first step is meditation. Well, that's really simple. You know, but I I know there's more going on there as well as you. And so, would you just take a minute to kind of um, share with the you know the value of meditation and focusing on those values, like what that's doing on the inside of us? Well, the way that I see it is that uh, life works best when life flows freely. It's like water uh, that flows through channels that are open to. Uh, letting it flow through. So if we think of life energy flowing through us as individuals, it helps to remove any blocks that's uh, prohibiting that uh, energy to flow through us. Um, I see those blocks as primarily rooted in fear-based mentalities, fear thoughts, um, challenges that we faced in our lives that caused us to constrict and close down So I do feel that physically there are parts of our bodies that we work to open up. Um, Practices like yoga work on the physical body uh, as well and opening up those blocks to the energy flow. But uh, when we meditate, then uh, those old fears and and unconscious um, restrictions that we put upon ourselves tend to bubble up and we're able to release those um, and become a clearer channel for energy to flow through us. You know, I, I talk about life as a value in itself, and I say life energizes and moves all things. The continuity of life is the core of our existence. But I see, I use the word life to talk about, uh, in a non-sectarian sectarian way, talk about God or life force or energy and, um, you know, in the Bible, it says, uh, uh, in the be- beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, and I see that Word as the initial voicing of an intention into matter. And those vibrations with the Big Bang traveled through all things uh, throughout the universe. And, um, and that life force then flows from one thing to the next. So... Going back to the name of my uh, of my organization, our new evolution, our purpose in life is to ev- is to evolve life and be instruments of life um, as it manifests throughout the material world. Um, and and I think that you know going back to the value of choice, we have the val- we have the choice to either align with life, align our values with uh, life, or to um, restrict and constrict and uh, not align with life. Uh, I propose that when we, our values and our actions align with life flowing freely throughout the universe, and then we'll be happier people. So going that was a long way around to say that through meditation we clear those blocks so that life can flow through us more naturally and easily and that makes us happier people. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I as we wrap this up, I just want to give you the opportunity to um to share if there was anything that I did not cover that you really wanted to share. Um, I just want to give you that opportunity um, to, to, again, share it from your heart. And then would you also let our audience know um, 
where they can find your book and um, and the, your new lev- your your new evolution page, um, just so they can have, write that down with their pen and paper. Sure. Um, so I think the final takeaway is is what we talked about that it's it what we're talking about really is a is a shift from fear to love. It's a very personal shift, but it has the power um, to, to transform our communities and and the whole world as we transform ourselves. And and it's really moving away from a, a mentality of competition at the expense of the whole to mm-hmm. collaboration for the benefit of all. And these values of uh, are intended to help people make that transformation as individuals mm-hmm. and as a society. So, um, so I encourage all of you who are listening to um, go within and 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 spread the word and connect with others through these shared values. Um, you know, one way that you can do that is. Uh, uh, for yourself, uh, uh, get a copy of the book. You can read a preview of the book on uh, my website. It's called OurNewEvolution.org, um, and sign up for the newsletter there. Uh, you know, to reach out to others, even posting on social media and using the hashtag Global Values uh, when you're posting things that reflect these values. Um, that way, your message will be. Uh, heard by others who share global values. Um, and also, you know, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm looking for partnerships. Uh, I'm looking for ways to uh, spread the word about these values other than on social media. And I'm working, uh, I, I plan to create an, uh, an online curriculum for teaching these values as well. Um, so um, please do check out ournewevolution.org. Uh, and uh, take a look at the book. If it interests you, you can get that on Amazon.com as well. Now, Karen, if if someone wanted to um, jump on board and um, support you and help build, like you said, to help teach these values, is there a place on your website that they're able to express that desire? Yes, uh, you can. Uh, there's a contact form. You can reach out to me that way. Um, I also wanted to mention that you'll find uh, videos that reflect global values as too. There's a playlist for a YouTube channel, um, one for unity, one for community, one for life, one for freedom, connection, sustainability, creativity, empowerment, choice, and integrity. So I have these ten playlists. And if you have videos also that reflect these values, um, please send those to me. You can also create your own video and upload that on my website as well. Uh, about what global values mean to you. So uh, there's uh, so many different ways to um, express yourself and connect, um, but you can. Um, the best source is ournewevolution.org. And I just wanted to point out also that it's funny when some people say it, they say your new evolution, but the reason I called it our new evolution is so that it's inclusive. When anybody's saying it, they have to include themselves. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I love that. I, you know, it's just been an honor to talk with you. And can I just say thank you so much for the work that you're doing, for the unity that you're creating, for the opportunity that you, the the invitation really that you are extending to the world to really come together and to step into a place of unconditional love, you know, within self, and then to extend that out to the world. Um, And thank you for, you know, bringing out those values and giving a framework for people to be able to, for for all of us to be able to step into that, you know, within ourselves and just being a strong voice for for love and for unity and for the for the consciousness and giving people an opportunity with what you're doing to to join you and to also express themselves experiencing that in their own world. I just, I honor you and I just want to tell you thank you so much for the work that you're doing and for coming on today and sharing your message um, and just being so open and and warm and and honest and 
just thank you so much, Karen. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here, and, and I really appreciate your your kind words and your support. Well, we just extend that invitation to everyone. We'll also put this information on our All in Talk Radio Facebook page. So please, as we put up the recording, the information will be there also. We want to, again, tell Karen thank you. And we we would love to have you back on the show again another time. Um, and for so for this afternoon, I just want to tell everyone thank you. And join us on our Facebook page for the Community Corner announcements and also for Karen Miller's information. We love you all, and we will we will be on again tomorrow at one o'clock. And join us tomorrow. 